post-operative management of um, tendon sheath laceration or indeed any synovial sepsis. Um, I've retitled that the violent approach to synovial sepsis because the recent trend is to place much more emphasis on killing bacteria, or actually killing them rather than simply washing them away in a more passive and, 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 and gentle way. And of course killing bacteria principally means antibiotic therapy and in what we're looking at here is topical antibiotic therapy as well as systemic therapy. Topical antibiotic treatment is particularly valuable with the so-called concentration dependent antibiotics and the, the ones that we use of these most commonly are the aminoglycosides, gentamicin, amikacin. The fluoroquinolones are also concentration dependent though used less often in this role. Topical treatment is perhaps less logical with time dependent antibiotics which typically are the beta lactams. So penicillin is time dependent. Penicillin will kill bacteria based on the time of exposure to penicillin rather than the actual concentration of it. If you put more penicillin in it doesn't kill any more bacteria. It still takes a certain amount of time to kill them. The, the, the time dependent antibiotics do include agents that we would use topically um, ticarcillin or timentin which is uh, ticarcillin with clavulanic acid and uh, the cephalosporins um, so ceftiafur and cefquinome uh, are both them. Um, time dependent antibiotics. The first topical treatment to look at is intrasynovial medication. Now the minimum inhibitory concentration both of gentamicin and of amikacin is 4 micrograms per mil of fluid. A single intraarticular injection of gentamicin, 150 milligrams, so 1.5 mils, not a big dose, results in a concentration in the synovial fluid of about 4,000 micrograms per mil. So 1,000 times the minimum inhibitory concentration. And those levels are maintained for over 24 hours. In the meantime, systemic treatment with 8 milligrams per kilogram, which is one of the bigger doses, 6.6 .6 is widely used, um, that results in, in, fluid, in concentration of gentamicin in the synovial fluid of about 10 micrograms per mil is the peak concentration. So you can see the difference in concentrations achieved. The next topical one to look at is intravenous regional perfusion. Now the technique here is that we place a tourniquet around the limb proximal to the site of infections. You can see this one is going just below the car, but just below the stifle. We're looking here to treat um, an infection in the hock region. And we don't exsanguinate the limb before. Um, doing this. So, so if anything it's quite useful to wind the tourniquet downwards to actually increase the volume of blood in the lower limb. It makes the intravenous injection subsequently um, much easier. A broad tourniquet is more effective than a narrow one. Oh, in fact a pneumatic tourniquet is the most effective but, but a nice broad one works perfectly well. The narrow ones do not work very well. And so we use this, which is a mountain bike in a tube, and there's a limitless supply of these. What we do is we go down to Halfords, and they let us rummage through the bin and, and take, um, take what we want. So, so we have a limitless supply of these. An intravenous injection is then made below the tourniquet, relatively straightforward um, thing to do. Now, we use these butterfly needles um, rather than using... Um, intravenous catheters. We found that using catheters we did have problems maintaining the veins. They seemed to be more traumatic to the vein and we ended up with more problems with venous thrombosis. So, so we like the, the, these butterfly needles. It's sensible as you're doing the injection just every now and again you just, just um, check that you're still in the vein, just, uh, just suck, suck back intermittently. And following injection maintain the tourniquet in place for about 20 minutes is usually enough to make sure that the little venules break down and, and the fluid leaks out into the, the, the tissue fluid layers. The other thing to say is we always dilute our volume of antibiotics to about 50 or 60 mil with, with saline um, for, for the injection. Now the results of intravenous regional perfusion following perfusion with between 500 milligrams and 1 gram of amikacin. There are various studies that have looked at it using various anatomical sites. 
there's a concentration of amicacin achieved within the synovial fluid of between 70 and 1,000 micrograms per mil, depending on which study um, you look at. So something like 20 to 200 times the minimum inhibitory concentration, significantly less than if you did a direct synovial injection, but obviously massively more than systemic therapy in its, on its own. The other thing I'd like to point out here is that you've got consist or consistently higher levels are achieved by intravenous regional perfusion than are achieved by intraosseous regional perfusion. This was when the two, uh, two techniques were directly compared, so same doses and, and same site. So intravenous regional perfusion did appear to be a more effective technique than intraosseous. So how do we manage synovial sepsis? Well, we diagnose the cases um, by synoviocentesis. We make sure that that sample is submitted for bacterial culture and sensitivity because that should be the last chance you get to get a, a, a culture off it. Because the next thing you're going to do with the, the same needle is medicate the joint or the sheath with 300 milligrams of amicacin is almost invariably um, what we use. Sometimes we do use gentamicin 300 milligrams under extreme economic pressure. But if you do use gentamicin, you have to combine it with local anesthetic because it does sting um, quite a lot. All the horses are managed with intravenous regional perfusion if it's practical. Obviously, we can't do that if it's a stifle, um, but um, anything like a, like a septic hock or, or anything like that will have an intravenous regional perfusion. And we typically will do this the day after surgery. So, so we'll operate on the horses and then the next day they have an intravenous regional perfusion um, and again usually using amicacin. We will do an intravenous regional perfusion on the third day as well if the horse hasn't completely responded. If so if there's perhaps an elevated white cell count um, on, um, on, on synoviosynthesis the next day. Um, we will keep going with these and in fact we'll keep going. Now we monitor the treatment, the efficacy of treatment of synovial sepsis by repeated synoviosynthesis. So taking another joint sample and we will do this every 48 hours. Um, so do it, uh, the horse will have surgery and then, then with intravenous regional perfusion the next day and um, the day after that tap the joint again, see if there were what ha was happening to the white cell count and we will repeat joint medication as we're doing here, repeat that every time. So, so never put a needle in a, in a joint that's suspect septic without putting some antibiotics into the joint. I'm just going to show you one case to illustrate the value of topical antibiotic treatment. This horse came directly in from Newbury Racecourse, uh, was quite lame, and evidently had a laceration into the digital flexor tendon sheath. The trainer would have nothing to do with surgery, was absolutely adamant that, that it would, the horse was not worth surgery. So we well, it had intrathecal medication with amicacin as part of the diagnosis um, procedure. The next day, the synovial fluid white cell count was 190 times 10 to the 9 per litre, and as you can see, completely, uh, completely turbid, and you couldn't see through it at all. But the only thing, good thing was that the horse wasn't very lame, so we did decide to carry on. It was treated with further intrasynovial antibiotics and, intrasyno and intravenous regional perfusion, so, so we kept going with, the, with, with topical antibiotics. The day after, the white cell count was down to 46 times 10 to the 9 per litre. And the next day, um, and, and then three days later, it was down to 1.8 times 10 to the 9 per litre. This horse is sound and it's back in, in full training and, and, and working very well. So it shows, goes to show how um, effective topical antibiotic treatment can be.